Hello and welcome everyone. We are so pleased to welcome you to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We have a wonderful lineup with us today. And so we are going to kick it off in just a moment. But first I wanted to get started with some housekeeping announcements. Uh, to get started, you may use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You do not need to wait until the specific institution is presenting to submit those questions. If you have questions for any of our panelists, go ahead and use the Q&A function. Your camera and your microphone are off so our panelists cannot see or hear you today. This is one of many different sessions happening. We've got two more happening right after this, so make sure you take a look and see if there are other institutions and panels of interest. And last but not least, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com forward slash WACAC. I'll put that link in the chat as well. But now for our main event, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists. We're going to get started today with the University of Strathclyde whenever you're ready. Hi everyone, so I'll just introduce myself first. Um, so my name's Ashley um, and I work within the Recruitment and International Office at the University of Strathclyde. So for anyone who isn't familiar with us, um, we are based in downtown Glasgow, um, which is in Scotland. So this is a, an iceberg's eye view um, of Glasgow city centre and this is where your campus would be based. So just some background information about Glasgow itself. So we are the third largest city in the UK um, and the largest in Scotland with around 1 million people. Um, we're known as the UNESCO City of Music. We have over 140 different music events on each week. There's six universities in total and a student population of around 170,000. Um, Glasgow is consistently voted friendly city in the world and we have two international airports which connect Glasgow with the rest of the world and we are only one hour flight away to London. So this is our city centre campus. Um, unlike some universities where you might find you have one building at one side of the city, another building maybe 40 minutes away, which makes it incredibly challenging to get to and from your classes, our campus is very much compact. So all of our buildings, your classes and accommodation are within about a five, 10 minute walk from each other. So just some background information about ourselves as an, a university then. Um, so we were founded in 1796 and we're known as the place of useful learning. Um, we do have a rich history of teaching and innovation. Um, and as I mentioned, we are located in Glasgow, which is Scotland's largest city. Um, we're home to students from over 100 different countries. In terms of awards and accolades, um, we were winner of the Times Higher Education UK University of the Year. Um, this was an award that we have already won. Uh, we won this back in 2012, so this was the second time that we won this award. And we were also winner of the Queen's Anniversary Prize for Higher and Further Education, um, which is one of the most prestigious prizes that we can win within our sector. Um, and most recently, we have climbed 36 places in the Guardian's University Guide. Um, so we're currently 15th in the UK. So for undergraduate study, um, we have four faculties here at the University of Strathclyde. So we have engineering, science, humanities and social sciences, and then we have our Strathclyde Business School. So we do model the um, US system um, in the way that there's a lot of choice and flexibility. Um, so for example, if you are choosing um, a course within our humanities and social sciences, you have three subjects that you can choose in your first year. Um, you would then choose two out of those three in your second year, and you can go on to um, choose to study either a joint or single honors degree. Um, there's more than 200 degree course combinations, as I mentioned, opportunities to combine subjects from different departments and faculties as well. So you can combine um, humanities like psychology with business, for example. Um, all of our undergraduate degrees are honours and they're four years in duration. And we also have integrated master's degrees available in our engineering and science faculties, which are five years in duration. 
So this is just an example of the degree structure within our humanities and social sciences. So as I mentioned, you would choose your three subjects in first year, um, two subjects in your second year. And again, you have that choice to be able to do a joint or single honours degree. And this is great for students who maybe don't know what they want to specialise in as an undergraduate student. Um, you're maybe still trying to decide what you want to do. Um, so this offers a lot of fl flexibility and choice for you. So in terms of the application process, um, you would apply through UCAS, which um, is the UK application portal. Um, you can apply for up to five course choices, and that's across universities throughout the whole of the UK. Um, the international deadline is the 30th of June. Alternatively, you can apply directly. However, if you are applying for more than one university in the UK, um, I would normally recommend that you apply through UCAS. For entry requirements, we are test optional this year. Um, so we will be looking at applications holistically. Um, for example, previously we would not have looked at AP Honours classes. However, we will be taking a look at those this year. Um, but we will look for a minimum 3.0 GPA. If you're unsure, you can send us your transcripts and we can review that for you though. And we do have a USA country page on our Strathclyde website, which I've just linked below there. Um, and this will give you all of the information that you need to know about entry requirements, um, funding, scholarships. So on that subject, um, tuition fees are usually range between $22,000 to $31,000. Um, Glasgow is one of the cheapest cities in the UK. So I normally tell students to budget between $11,500 to maybe about $14,000, $15,000 per academic year. Um, we do have faculty scholarships available, um, up to £5,000 per year. Um, yes, you will receive that for each year that you study at the university, um, and we also accept FAFSA. So lastly, just um, some additional information about some you know, of the different clubs and societies that we have available. Um, so we have our Strathclyde Sports Centre, um, which opened back in 2018. There's a swimming pool, there's over 50 different um, sports clubs to join. We also have our student union, um, which last time I checked was over 100 different clubs and societies. Um, so that's anything from you know, hobbies or subject related clubs that you can join. We also have on-campus accommodation specifically available for undergraduate students. And in addition to that, we have an international student support services, um, disability and wellbeing service, and we have our study skills work workshop as well. And we also have a career service available on campus, which can help with finding part-time opportunities if you need to work in addition to your studies. And um, the career service will also give you access to graduate fairs. Um, so the opportunity is there to meet um, with prospective employers, uh, both locally and internationally as well. And the career service is available for up to five years after you finish your studies. So if you have any questions after today, please feel free to get in touch with us. And as I said, we do have a USA country page as well. So please feel free to visit that web page if you need to find out more information. We do bi-weekly webinars as well. So feel free to join them. Thanks everyone. Wonderful, what a great way to kick off this event. Thank you so much. We are going to hear now from the University of Melbourne whenever you're ready. Okay, uh, good day everyone. This is Todd St. Rain from the University of Melbourne. So we're gonna take a brief pause uh, from uh, Europe and head down to Australia. It's only a 13 hour flight and it's already 10 o'clock tomorrow morning in Australia. So I'm Todd St. Rain, the North America um, manager. So welcome to UniMelb, or as we say in the local Aboriginal language, Wamanjaika. Um, Melbourne is a top-ranked um, public research-intensive university in the southern part of the country. And as you can see, we're a very comprehensive university and a broad range of disciplines that excel at the global level. Uh, this is the beautiful Great Barrier Reef, uh, which is about a four-hour flight north of um, Melbourne. And imagine even in your first year taking classes with Madeleine Van Oppen, who is bioengineering heat-resistant coral in an effort to save the Great Barrier Reef. 
this is just one example of the kind of academic experience you can have at a leading university that is regarded as an Australian version of an Ivy League, or say here in California, our partner institutions include places like UC Berkeley and Stanford. This is our main campus. We're right in the heart of Melbourne in between the biomedical precinct in Little Italy and about 15 minutes from downtown. One of the things that I love about Australia is that it's a very multicultural country. Our campus is very, very international with nearly half the students uh, from around the world. We are very large with over 25,000 undergraduates. But if you'd like to stay connected to an Amer the American community, there are several hundred American uh, students on campus. So we have great outcomes from our graduates and interesting to note that uh, all international students can stay and work in Australia for two years after graduation, uh, giving you options as to where you could do your degrees, uh, where you could start your career, excuse me. Uh, degrees in Australia are just three years, that's standard. So that's the savings in itself. At the current exchange rate, your annual tuition is gonna be about 33,000 US dollars. We would estimate about 15 to 20,000 US dollars for living expenses. Uh, you can use uh, FAFSA loans and um, part-time jobs are available uh, for international students with minimum wage, $20 an hour. So admissions is gonna be based only on entry requirements. We're not gonna we look at personal statements, extracurriculars, and we'll get into details of this in just a moment. You're doing all of this in the great city of Melbourne, um, a city of 4 million, regarded as Australia's sports and cultural capital. We have streamlined our degrees into eight degrees, but with about 150 majors and minors, uh, this could be within the Bachelor of Agriculture. We call the humanities and liberal arts arts, and here are in bold some of the more popular majors. We have an entire degree in biomedicine. We call business commerce. There's even design, performing arts, including um, music, as well as a plethora in the sciences, including engineering and IT. So we call degrees courses. You have to learn to speak Australian English. So if you go to this QR code, it will help you to find a course um, and explore because your interest may be in more than one major and may maybe even more than one degree. So within those three years degrees, we have 25% of your subjects are going to be called breadth subjects. Any one of your choosing, anything of your choosing, um, consider it a gen ed light. Um, if you want to extend to four years, we have these things called concurrent diplomas, or you can do a year of independent research, which is what we call honors. So let's look at entry requirements for high school students. It's guaranteed entry based on a minimum SAT or ACT score, an unweighted GPA, and AP exams, which are for pre to meet prerequisites, not for college court credit. And these entry requirements do vary slightly per degree. We are not test optional, but test alternative. So we do have an Australian online stat test or an aggregate of AP exams to meet the SAT or ACT requirement. If you're not presenting an AP exam, you would have to submit the syllabus of a college or university subject for evaluation to see if that meets the prerequisite. Anyone doing the IB, we have guaranteed entry based on a minimum score. And any transfer students out there, it's really straightforward. It's just a 3.0 and only a handful of degrees require prerequisite. So it is different down under. Our seasons are opposite and so are our semesters. Semester one starts in March. Semester two starts in late July. You could actually uh, start in either semester coming from the US because uh, the uh, core classes are offered in every semester. Now you could apply as late as June to start in mid-year in July. My advice is because we offer rolling admissions, just apply when you're applying to US universities. And if you want to defer to have a bit of a mini gap here, um, that is quite standard and quite an automatic process in Australia. We do guarantee accommodation, whether that's a college or a student apartment, you always get your own room. Of course, we're gonna have lots of clubs and societies to make the experience great. We'll end with a brief campus tour, again, right in the heart of the city, lovely sandstone historic buildings, wide open spaces, but also really modern facilities, um, lecture halls, labs. We have to stop off at the underground car park because we do things like little Mad Max movies uh, in there because you never know who you might meet on campus. 
Melbourne is very much a city of funky laneways with street art and live music, a city of sports and nature. I'm based in San Francisco, so please get in contact um, if you have any other uh, further questions. And thanks so much for your interest. Okay, and on to the next presenter. Wonderful. Well, that was fantastic. It was a nice uh, jaunt over to Australia for a brief interlude. We're going to head back to the UK now and we're going to turn it over to the University of Essex whenever you are ready. Thanks. Um, and yeah, hello from that, uh, I guess, yeah, the other side of the world. My name is, is Tim. I'm the International Officer for, for North America at the University of Essex. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about our institution. I think we're actually the only, in oh no, one other is joined, um, but we are one of two English universities here today. Um, and you'll probably be aware when you start looking at um, at universities in the United Kingdom. There are differences between universities in Scotland uh, and universities in England. So I've just got a slide um, here to um, say why students should choose England as a study destination. One of the big differences, I suppose, between ourselves and, and the US um, is that in England, uh, bachelor's degrees are three years in duration. Um, there are some exceptions to this. So for example, courses um, related to pharmacy are four years and medical courses are five years in duration. Um, similarly, if you do an integrated master's course, um, it will be a four year degree, but for the most part, our bachelor's degrees are three years in duration. This is because we've got what's known as an early degree specialist. So the, 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 uh, we don't do general ed. So all three years of the degrees are focused purely on the subject that you want to be studying. Um, the tuition fees in the United Kingdom are very competitive and particularly when compared to private institutions or out-of-state institutions. So typically at the University of Essex, um, our tuition fees are between £20,000 and £30,000 per year. Uh, on top of that, we have a wide range of international scholarships available for um, specifically for US students. Um, we are FAFSA accredited um, and we also accept veterans benefits in the United Kingdom as well. Um, when students apply to the United Kingdom, they apply through a very simple common application system, which is called UCAS, it's the uh, University and Colleges Admission Service. Um, students make one application and, and it can be sent to five universities for around $40, I believe. So it's a, a very cost effective way of making an application um, to multiple universities when you, uh, when you look at the United Kingdom. Um, now, the student visa route will allow students to um, stay in the United Kingdom for the, for the duration of their studies, um, and it does allow for work. So students are allowed to work for 20 hours per week whilst they're studying, and during the holidays they can work um, for however long they want, and that's both on or off campus. Further to this, um, they're introducing this year this uh, two-year post-study work option, so students will be able to um, stay and live and work at any level in the United Kingdom after they've graduated, so if you enjoyed your time here or if you wanted to work on that British accent you'd be able to do so. Um, this slide would, uh, is to describe why US students should choose Essex. So each year we welcome about 100 US students um, to, to the university each year. What I really enjoy about my job is um, that all of our US students come to the University of Essex for entirely different reasons. Um, we offer a wide range of subjects and we are particularly famous for our acting school which is known as East 15. It's ranked first in the UK for drama and it's a conservatoire style acting school um, and uh, this is uh, the only non-American school in the world to be recognized by ERTA so they audition in more normal times every year um, in Los Angeles and in New York um, to recruit students so this is a very popular choice similarly we've got a very strong reputation in the field of social sciences and uh, particularly in the field of human rights where we're recognized as a world leader uh, we're currently 29th in the world for politics and international relations um, we also have a number of students come for our um, leading basketball and volleyball programs in the UK and we have got some very large scholarships available for students looking to um, to continue their athletic career while studying at the university. So in true six by six fashion I have got six slides now, um, six points um, as to why students should choose the University of Essex. First of all is our location. Um, we have three campuses, one in Colchester, which is the UK's oldest recorded town. So when the Romans came over, they, they started at Colchester. It was previously the capital for about 30 years, a long, long time ago before it was moved to London. 
uh, we have our South End campus, um, which is a beach location, um, which is home to um, some of our business school courses, some of our acting courses, and our um, School of Dental Hygiene. And then we have Loughton, which is kind of closer closer towards London. It's on the on the tube line, and that's specifically for our acting school. Now, one thing which you might know about the UK is that we're very, very small. So I think you can fit around four of them into California alone. So it's super easy to get about. Um, all of our campuses are within very easy reach of London. So our Colchester campus, which is the furthest way from London, is 45 minutes on a direct train and you're into the city. Uh, our students really enjoy this because um, it's a very cost effective way of being close to London without having the associated costs of living and studying in London, but it's very easy to get in and out of the city. Um, Colchester, as I said, is the UK's oldest recorded town, uh, so it's got Roman fortifications around, uh, around the town. It's got a castle because everywhere has a castle in the United Kingdom, um, and it's a very student-focused town. So we have around 15,000 students, and there are about 150,000 people who live in Colchester. So one in ten is a student, so everything is very geared towards student life. Um, Arguably some of the UK's best weather, although I'm uh, aware that I'm speaking to people on, on the West Coast here um, in, in Essex. And we have a mix of beaches and cities and towns and lovely villages and the countryside. So students get the best of all worlds. Um, second point uh, would be our academic teaching. So we were um, ranked gold in a, in a teaching excellence framework. Um, so this is the, the highest level that, uh, that TEF gives and it reflects our, our teaching excellence and teaching quality. Um, we're top 25 in the UK for research quality. We're number one for, for politics research um, since the records began. Um, we're a top 30 school for politics and top 50 for sociology. Um, we offer a wide range of subjects and I'd strongly encourage you to check out um, the 300 plus undergraduate courses which we have at the university. Uh, third will be student life. Um, so we've got a very large, vibrant campus community. It's a very international community at the University of Essex. And on campus, we have our sport arena, um, our theatres. Um, on each campus, we have a cinema. We've got 20 plus restaurants and bars. We've got our on-campus hotel. We've got a gym. We've got a climbing wall. Uh, the World Frisbee Golf Championships were, were on our course a couple of years ago. So there's a lot going on on campus. Um, students get to live on campus and we guarantee students accommodation um, for, for first year coming over. And a great thing about the UK is that in most cases, students get their own room. It's the norm for students to be having their own room. And it's around 70% of our rooms have their own batteries as well. Um, and we spend an awful lot on our students, so we truly care about our students. We're seventh for spend on services and facilities per student. Um, my fourth point would be, and it's a very cost-effective way to get a bachelor's degree. As I mentioned before, most of our, our bachelor's degrees are, are three years in duration, um, and the completion rate is well over 90% um, across the UK. We've got very competitive fees um, and a number of scholarships available, to, available for students. Um, fifth would be our, um, our endeavours to get students jobs. So obviously coming over to, uh, to study overseas, um, students are there to develop academically and, and personally, but also professionally as well. A number of our courses have the option of taking a placement year alongside them. 91% um, of our undergraduate students are in employment or further study. Um, we have our own careers centre, obviously, on campus, and we run subject-specific careers fairs throughout the year. Um, we've also got a really uh, excellent initiative, which is known as Languages for All. So students are able to learn a language um, for free alongside their degree, and those are in French, Spanish, Russian, Japanese, um, Mandarin, Chinese, Arabic, and students are able to learn them from, from, um, from a beginner's level all the way up to advanced. Uh, my final point, and it's my favourite thing about the university, is our international community. So over 40% of our students are overseas. Uh, we have a number of students from the US and from uh, Central and South America, and from South and East Asia, a number of students from, from Europe as well. Um, so we've got over 140 nationalities represented in Colchester and a wide range of cultural activities and societies on campus. That is everything from myself. Thank you very much for listening to me and I will pass on to the next presenter. Thank you. Thank you so much, University of Essex. I appreciate it. Great presentation. We are going to move now to the University of Stirling, Scotland. I want to remind everyone that the Q&A function is open, so get those questions in for our panelists. 
Thanks, Jeannie. Um, I'm Ali. I'm a Head of Student Recruitment at the University of Stirling. So you're back to Scotland now, um, a bit like Ashley at the University of Strathclyde earlier on. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my university. So it's a campus based university, but it's actually got the best of both worlds because it's about 10 minutes from the city centre of Stirling. And although you may well have heard about um, Edinburgh, which is the capital of Scotland, Stirling was actually the ancient capital of Scotland. So a little bit about the university. It's a medium sized university for Scotland with about 14,000 students and 120 different nationalities are represented. And that's not just in the student body, that's also across our staff members as well. So it's very multicultural uh, university. Stirling is well known for sports. Um, we're Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence. And last year we were also voted the UK Sports University of the Year. Um, so we have Olympians um, that train at the campus, people that have trained in the, um, and participated in the Commonwealth Games, all the way down to people like myself who are beginners in many sports. So, um, you know, there's sports for, for absolutely all ranges of, um, of ability and talent. Um, in addition to, to that, we're top 30 in the UK. Um, one thing that we're really proud of is our national student survey um, rank. So we're consistently in the top 20 in the UK for that. And that every year is a survey that's conducted by students about their um, student experience, their teaching, research, etc. Just basically their experience at their university and we're consistently in the top 20 um, in the UK. For those of you wondering where about in Scotland uh, Stirling is, well, it's where the heart is on that map. Um, Ashley's ob obviously talked to you about Glasgow, which is the third largest city in the UK, and it's the largest city in Scotland. And we're about 25 minutes um, from Glasgow. Um, Stirling is a city um, itself, and um, Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland, is about 40 minutes away. So a bit like Tim mentioned earlier, um, the UK um, is quite compact and uh, easy to get around. Equally, if you want to go exploring in Scotland, Stirling is um, centrally located. So if you want to go and explore the highlands of Scotland, want to search for the Loch Ness Monster, it's ideally situated. This is our beautiful campus. It's 330 acres. Um, like I say, it's about 10 minutes from the city centre of Stirling, but everything is on campus that you would possibly need. So all the sorry, teaching facilities, accommodation, sports facilities, um, we've got our own cinema, um, as well as delis, restaurants, a pharmacy, um, a doctor's surgery, um, and a dental surgery as well. And it's probably one of the most Scottish um, campuses that you can find. We've got our own loch, which is the Scottish word for lake. That's what you see in the middle of the picture there. And we've got our own castle on campus. And we also have a nine hole golf course for those of you that are interested in golf. Um, Ashley mentioned earlier, um, you know, the ultra flexible system in Scotland, because we've got a four year degree, it's something that you're going to be very used to um, in the US. And we have um, degrees that are quite like liberal arts and um, that you take multiple subjects in the first couple of years before then specialising in a single honours or a joint honours. Um, with all, obviously with the exception of some of the professionally accredited courses and um, things like law, teaching, etc. We've got five different uh, faculties and at Stirling it's ultra flexible so you can actually pick subjects cross faculty as well. So we've got arts and humanities, everything from English, journalism, film and media, history, etc health sciences and sport, nursing, paramedic science, you would expect Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence to have some sports courses. Um, natural sciences, we've got marine biology, psychology, computing, maths, social sciences, criminology and uh, sociology and psychology is what we specialise in there. And then um, SMS, Sterling Management School, has everything that you would expect from marketing to human resource management to economics and um, accountancy. In terms of entry requirements, we are fully uh, test optional um, due, due to the COVID pandemic, but we have no end date for that. So we're currently uh, test optional. Um, and But if you are submitting tests, th these are the sort of scores that we're looking for. We're looking for around three um, in your, your GPA. And obviously, um, as well as your grades, 
the um, academic reference that you submit and the personal statement that you sub supply in your application is just as important. At Stirling, um, obviously, like Ashley mentioned, um, UCAS, we would sort of steer you towards UCAS because if you're applying to multiple schools um, in the UK, then it's easier for you because you can apply to up to five. Um, but at Stirling, we also accept direct applications and we're also part of the Common App as well. In terms of scholarships, well, we do have a wide range of sports scholarships, funnily enough, um, but we also have um, a, a, a number of different undergraduate um, international scholarships, including the automatic um, one there, which is £2,000 um, fee waiver each year. In case anybody's, in case anybody spotted this, this is actually Jamie Fraser from Outlander, and the reason that he's here is a lot of Outlander is actually filmed on our campus. So there you go, there's a fun fact for today. Uh, tuition fees uh, for 2021, um, looking between about 15,000 and around 17,000 uh, per year, um, pounds that is, depending if you've got a classroom or a lab-based subject that you're doing. However, Stirling is consistently ranked as one of the um, least expensive cities to live in the, throughout the whole U of the UK, and we have a wide range of part-time job opportunities, not just on campus with all the restaurants, delis, etc., um, but also in the city centre of Stirling. And then last but not least, accommodation. Tim, I think, mentioned that um, it tends to be single rooms. Um, in the UK, and that's no exception at Stirling. Um, the one thing to note is uh, we don't have any meal plans at Stirling. It's all self-catered. So if you haven't already, get some recipes up your sleeve um, because you'll be trying them out in the shared kitchens in the student accommodation. And we do have 24-7 um, round-the-clock uh, staff support there um, if you need any help, um, and it's very uh, security-minded as well. Like I mentioned, I'm Ali Clark. That's a QR code if you want to find out a little bit more about Sterling, but happy for you to get in touch with me directly. And I'm now going to pass back to Jeannie because I think we've got our last presenter. You got it. Thank you so much, University of Sterling. We appreciate that information. We are going to hear now from the University of Southampton whenever you are ready. Thank you very much. I'm trying to share my screen. Where is it? Sorry. Um, okay. Oh, here it is. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Looks great. Great. Thank you. Hi, uh, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I I work for the University of Southampton. I'm. Uh, my name is Sean Seggles and I work representing the US and Canada. So I'll tell you a little bit about um, the University of Southampton where we're right in the south of England. We're just over an hour and 20 minutes from London. Um, we are very conveniently located. Um, we have direct access to uh, the main airports in London, which are Gatwick and Heathrow. And also we, um, have a free bus pass already included in the fees if you decide to to live in the halls of residence. Uh, Southampton was uh, founded in 1962 as the Hartley Institute and we're very proud to say that we're uh, part of the top 100 universities according to QS rankings. We were ranked 90th this year. We're also in the top 20 in the UK. We're a founding member of the Rosser Group. Uh, we're very happy and proud to say this. Um, also, we are in the top, in the top three, four spin-out companies um university so we have a startup accelerator and we support our students that have um, a project in mind that want to develop into a product or um, into an actual business um so i'll tell you a little bit about the numbers in southampton we have over twenty six thousand students from which seven thousand are international students that means that we have um from over students from over 140 countries who'd be sharing a classroom with lots of different international students and that makes um, the experience very um, enriching. And I would say that we welcome around 300 American students every year. And we have around seven, we have seven different campuses, including one in Malaysia. And we cover pretty much every area. We cover engineering. All of our engineering programs are in the top 10 in the UK. We cover oceanography, art sciences, English, literature, linguistics, music, um, it was ranked as number one in the UK. 
we have medicine and health sciences as well, um, computer science, electronics. We have a school of art based in Winchester. Um, I would dare to say that we do not cover architecture, dentistry, and veterinary, but we cover pretty much um, everything else. So our campus is really nice. We have uh, our main campus, which is Highfield campus. It has pretty much everything that you could need. We have a student union. We have plenty of um, cafes. We've got several restaurants, bars. Uh, we've got a GP on campus, banks, shops, uh, sports center, climbing wall, a swimming pool. We have an art gallery. Uh, we have a theater, a concert hall. We even have a cinema, which is uh, usually cheaper than of the actual cinema outside our campus. So we have over 300 clubs and societies that are run by students. If you decide to engage in maybe sports society or an art society, we've got over 300 options. We've got uh, any kind of sport that you can think of, uh, football, sailing, um, rugby. We even have a Quidditch society, the Harry Potter sport. Um, we've got lots of different uh, cultural societies, such as the Brazilian Society, the Mexican Society. We've got uh, societies for our, our entrepreneurs as well. If you're interested in developing your idea into an actual business or a product or um, something that you want to develop, we've got the Fish and Toe Society. Uh, we've got volunteering opportunities as well. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you will find at least one option that you'd be interested in. So these are just some pictures of our um, our theater, our concert hall, one of our um, uh, where our cinema is located as well. So there's plenty of options for you to engage in, in social activities as well. So I'll tell you a little bit about the city itself. Uh, we are, um, as I mentioned, in the south of England, so it's one of the sunniest and greeniest cities in the UK. We were ranked one of the most affordable student cities in England. Uh, we're one of the top four cities to live in Britain. We're the cruise ship capital of Europe. Um, we're, we have a small city, uh, sorry, a small population of over a little bit over 250,000 people. Um, and we've got a small airport as well that has lots of direct destinations to different places in Europe. So this is how the Southampton docks look like. And as a fun fact, uh, the Titanic left Southampton in 1912, so we've got a CC museum if you're interested in, in history as well. We've got a couple of museums, we've got yachts and boats and lots of opportunities for you to um, just visit our city ar around the weekends when you're not studying. Um, but if you decide to go and visit another city, we've got plenty of um, pretty close cities around Southampton. We've got Brighton which is um, a little bit less than two hours away. I mentioned London, it's just an hour and 20 minutes away by train. We've got Reading, Stonehenge, Bristol, Bath, Cardiff, uh, Bournemouth. So plenty of uh, cities that you could visit while you're not studying. I mentioned uh, also that we've got a small airport that has direct links to lots of different cities, such as the one you're seeing um, on the screen. Um, plus, we've got a direct train to Gatwick and a direct bus from the campus to Heathrow. We also have a couple of activities, such as um, if you're interested in hiking or, or cycling, you could visit the New Forest, which is around 10 minutes from Southampton. We've got Winchester, where our School of Art is located. We've got the Isle of Wight and Bournemouth. Um, so plenty of um, yeah, activities if you're inter in, interested in water sports such as kayaking or sailing um, or even surfing, uh, we've got options for you at Southampton. We also have a, a stadium. We have a very big uh, football team, the Southampton Saints, if you're interested in football. We also have a big sailing, um, a couple of sailing clubs in Southampton, as I mentioned, we're by the coast. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, that would be a really good opportunity for you to try a couple of new sports. Um, so I think um, that's everything on my behalf. If you have any questions um, at the end, I'm happy to, to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.
Yeah, well, thank you. We really appreciate hearing that presentation about the University of Southampton, and we appreciate hearing about all of these wonderful campuses and programs. We are going to take advantage of having this expert panel with us today by moving into a brief Q&A and starting with a question that will help us uh, as students go through the college search process. So give me one second while I pull up my screen here. And the first question we're gonna kick it off with is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We're gonna go in the same order. So I'll kick it to the University of Strathclyde first. Yeah, so if you're thinking of coming to study in the UK, um, my advice would be to do as much research as possible. Um, although the UK is small, each and every single university offers a different experience, whether it be traditional or, um, you know, staying in the city centre or the countryside. So do as much research as you can. If you can, come and visit the campus. That's great. If you can't, um, do get in touch with the international officers. Um, they do lots of work on webinars um, and Zoom calls to give you as much information as possible. Great advice. Uh, University of Melbourne, what is your advice? Um, first of all, if you're feeling overwhelmed, don't sweat it. Um, I remember being really overwhelmed in high school and do figure it out. My other advice is go abroad. Uh, of course, we would love for you to come and do an entire degree for abroad, but if you decide that's not for you, um, really make an international experience, saying like a semester overseas as part of your university experience. You'll see yourself in a whole new light, your country in a new light, country needs you to go abroad to see who Americans are in a new light. And um, so check out the study abroad office of American universities to see you know, who they partner with um, and that would be my advice to you. Great advice. Okay, University of Essex, what is your tip? Well, I was just thinking, it's, I think it's just important to recognize that studying abroad is a feasible option. It's not a new thing. Um, you know, the, the UK welcomes you know, thousands or tens of thousands of, of students specifically from the US each year. Um, and as Ashley had said, there's members of staff at each university who are there specifically to assist students in that journey. So yeah, not being afraid to reach out to students, I think uh, reach out to universities and reach out to international offices is really important. Um, specific to the UK, I would recommend students check out the UCAS website, which I'm just going to put in the chat now, um, because beyond being just a, a sort of an application portal to the UK, um, it has got pretty much all of the information from each university. It's got this really good course search functionality um, where you can just type in buzzwords and it will come up with a long list of all of the different types of courses um, that you will be able to study in the UK, as well as uh, things like entry requirements, um, course specifics and contact details. So I'll put that in the chat there and that will be, those would be my two bits of advice. Oh, that's so helpful. Thank you for sharing that with us. And I, I can't remember if it was already mentioned or not, but I just want to remind attendees that in the UK, when they say courses, um, they're usually talking about what we're calling majors in the United States. So not individual subjects that you might take for um, one semester, but your entire degree plan, um, your major area of study. So just a, a little bit of a lingo um, information for everyone. Okay, uh, University of Stirling, Scotland, Scotland, what is your advice? Well, it, it is UCAS advice um, again. So once you've gone onto the link that Tim sent um, and narrowed down your search in terms of, you know, say you're interested in an accountancy degree or a history degree, it's important to read the course content because two universities with similar named courses can vary drastically and you need to make sure it's the right subject for you because some might have work experience placements some might have the opportunity to study abroad to another um, <laughs> to another country um, after you come over to, to the UK. Um, what I would say is there's a personal statement that you have to write as part of the UCAS process. So irrespective of, of the fact that you're applying to five different courses, you only have one personal statement. So top tip, do not mention one particular university if you're applying to five. Um, and also the, the UCAS statement really needs to showcase why you're interested in that subject. So um, again, start doing your research and start thinking about why you're applying for that particular course. 
so helpful. Thank you so much for that advice. Okay, we're gonna have the University of Southampton close this question out for us. Thank you. I think my colleagues have covered a lot, um, but I think if I would give to, if I, if I were to give you an advice would be to, again, do as much research as you can, because as, as, as mentioned before, one course might be very similar to another university, but there might be some specific um, topics that might be brought in a module that might be more interesting than comparing to other university. And also do research about the city. Is this where you're going to, to be spending um, a very long time? So you want to do research about what kind of activities you could engage in, um, what kind of even sports or, or places to visit. So so yeah, if it's if it's a, a big city or a smaller city, um, if that's um, where, where you would be fee, where you'll be feeling like comfortable living. So I think doing as much research uh, as possible about the modules, the topics, the subjects, and about the city. I think that would be my my advice. Fantastic. Well, we are so fortunate to have all of these experts. It's not often that we get to have experts from around the world join us. So thank you so much for bringing your expertise, sharing with us about your campuses and programs. I also want to thank those of you who are joining us in the middle of the night for, for being here too, because I know that that's the case for some of you. I also want to now thank our um, attendees. So whether you are joining this live stream here or you're catching the recording at a later date, we're really grateful that you joined us today. And I wanted to remind everyone that there are two more sessions happening after this event. So check out to see if there are other sessions that look of interest. Um, but then this session, as well as all of the others in this event are being recorded. And you can find those recordings in about a week at strivescan.com forward slash WACAC. Last but not least, when you close out your session today, you're going to get a very quick four question survey. If you could provide us feedback on today's event, that would be very helpful. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time it may be um, where you are in the world today. Thank you. Bye-bye.